Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers. And I'm Kate Abraham. And on today's show, we have another web workshop. And we're going to teach kids how to program using Hackity Hack. Hackity Hack. Hackity Hack. Today on The Lab. <laughs> you good to see you and welcome to the lab this is it yeah the lab right here the place where we help you understand everything there is to know about technology i'm leo laporte this is kate abraham Hello. and uh, you saw sean carruthers earlier mm -hmm. and what was he talking about hackity hack, -hack? i know hackity hack is hackity hack hackity hack oh, hackity -hack. Hmm. well you know it's kind of interesting we've talked about alice before there mm -hmm. are a number of uh, programming languages that are open source and free designed to teach kids how to do computers Absolutely. and you may say well I don't want you know my kids don't want to be a computer programmer but it's a great way to also understand computers feel some control over computers so whether mm -hmm. they're going to be a programmer or not it's not important but it's more about like giving them a sense of empowerment when it comes That's to technology cool. yeah and it very really very is cool. it's a great way to get them excited about it uh, we're going to talk to Susie Gardner too she has a web workshop you mentioned that mm -hmm. your uh, tip of the day yes Sean's shiny shiny and lots of great I see one two three four great callers yeah, on the show from all over the world from all over the world I love that part yeah. about it this is episode 145 we're glad you're here let's get our first caller of the day fantastic. on fantastic we have Naomi on the line and she is from Canberra in the Australian Capital Territory there we go hello Naomi Hello, Leo. Welcome to the lab. Thank you. What can I do for you today? I've had digital cameras for a while now, like okay. a lot of people, and I'm interested in getting a digital photo frame. And there suddenly seem to be a lot of them around, and I'd just really like some suggestions on what I should be looking for. Resolution yeah. and, you know, some play DivX, and is that really worth paying for? And yeah, I mean, I guess what, uh, the question is, uh, is this for you and your house, or are you going to give it to mom or grandma? I, I mean, wanted, I wanted to get one for myself and one for my parents. Yeah, see, that's, that's where the wireless becomes interesting, because you can upload pictures to a website, and it can automatically appear on their frame. Oh, okay. And I love that idea. I think that's very, very cool. Um, there are a number of companies that make these, of course. Philips does, some big names. Uh, Siva, I think it's, or Siva, C-E-I-V-A has been doing this. They were the first to do this. Um, I'm going to show you one, and then I think we have a few around here. I think Kate has, has, has got, been, been working on this. I'm going to show you, um, the, the company is Digital Spectrum Incorporated, or DSI. This is a lesser known company, but they make some very interesting frames. This is the, now it's not cheap, it's 350 bucks, but the US, but this is the MF8515. This is an eight by 10 frame, so it's 15 inches, 800 by 600, which is about as big as most of the frames are, and certainly that's plenty for this. This has 802.11 wireless. You don't have to subscribe to anything either. You can configure it to automatically get pictures from Flickr, for instance. So you just automatically upload to Flickr or Windows Live Spaces or Web Shots, you see here, and or even My Memory Frame, and it will automatically do a slideshow on the frame. This is a great one for Grandma. Um, it has stereo speakers and it plays back video files as well as MP3, so you could even have music on this or videos as well. I mean, I think there's a lot to be said for this. It's an expensive frame, but that's partly because it's so big. You know, the larger the frame is, we're going to show you some other images. This the larger the frame is, the the more you're going to spend on this. But let, I'll tell you what. Let's walk over because Kate's been doing some research. It's just your timing couldn't be better, Naomi. She's been doing some research on this, mm -hmm. and she has some look. She has some little Absolutely. ones and big ones here. I don't want to give away too much of the segment we'll be doing on an upcoming show. Samsung, um, Siva, yeah. and then who makes these, this biggie? This is Smart Parts. Smart and Parts. And the the idea is obviously if you have three options. This is your basic um, photo frame, which literally you plug in your memory card. It's compatible with all memory cards. So you could always mail your parents the memory card. Yeah, absolutely. So there's that option if they want to download the pictures themselves right. from, the, from the net. Uh, this is at $360. Okay. But it's just a the straight, bigger ones are more expensive. Yeah, it's, it's all just, about the screen this size. This is 15 inches, just a yeah. straightforward frame. This one here is the Siva one you were talking about. Yeah, and they, they pioneered this category. Yes. But they charge you a monthly fee. Exactly. Actually, a yearly fee is $100. Okay. A three yearly fee is for, uh, 249 But how much is the frame? Uh, the frame itself is 224 See, I think the, given that... Expensive. the Cost the frame and the yearly yeah. subscription. Plus, you have to buy the dongle for the the wireless. It's as well. not a standard. It's not no. standard in any way. And last but not least, and this is actually another segment we'll be doing. This is the Samsung one. Look at that. And this actually is compatible with something called Frame Channel. 
and the website is framechannel.com and it's a completely free service, it's wireless. Once you configure this and you set up frame channel to actually configure your photographs, right. then that will update automatically as well. Do your parents have uh, Wi-Fi? They have, are they on the internet? They, yeah, they have broadband, but it's uh, not wireless, I don't think. Right. Some of these have Ethernet connectors, so you could always connect yes. it that way. Uh, but most of them use, I'll just look here, nah, yes, this one, no, it's USB only. Yes, yeah, that's, so that's, that's that That's going to be an issue, is that you, know, you might want to actually set them up for wireless networking mm -hmm. as well when you give them the frame. Um, I like the idea, now maybe this is too big, this is how big the DSi frame is right. as well. But I like the idea of this big frame, I mean, you see the details, and if you send them a movie, uh, Windows Media Player movie, it will automatically play back in there, which is kind of cool. So we'll save this for another yes. segment, but we just want to look at the kind of the big, medium, yep. and the small, and also the idea of subscription. I think that's the key. I mean, exactly. when you say the SIVA, you have to pay $100 a year to use that thing, that doesn't seem right to me. I, I don't know uh, what have, what's available in there. I mean, you can always go online and buy these, but I would absolutely look at this digital spectrum frame. These frames have been around for four years, maybe five years, and they're still kind of a work in progress. None of these frames are perfect yet, but I think this one gives you kind of the best of all worlds. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this. It's the wireless digital frame from Digital Spectrum, dsicentral.com. I'd take a look at that one. It does pretty much everything any of these do, and because it's, it's $349, but you only pay once. You don't have to pay that monthly fee. I really have to say I like that. Okay? Sounds, sounds better. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, you might get a big one from mom and dad, and then you have a little one for yourself, or, or maybe vice versa. But I think, boy, I tell you, um, if you have parents who are not may maybe sophisticated about using the web or about uh, about getting online, but you want to give them these pictures so they can see them all the time, what a neat way. And, you know, they get up in the morning, and there's new pictures of the kids on there. That not that? I mean, I think that's so cool. Coming up in just a bit, we're going to take a web site, and we're going to de decompose it deconstruct it. We're going to slice it and dice it, and we're going to put it all back together better than new. It's our web workshop. Susie Gardner's here in just a bit. You stay right here. Welcome back to the lab. Leo Laporte here, and it's time to deconstruct a website. From Hop Studios, ladies and gentlemen, our website deconstructors, <laughs> Susie Gardner. She, it's our web workshop where she takes a, a viewer's website, takes a look at it, and maybe gives them some tips for improving it. Could you improve this site? I could. This is a Find For You. Find For You, and also based in Australia. Another Australian site, mm -hmm. find the number for you dot com slash au. Now, clearly, one thing it's obvious when you look at this site. First of all, it's a commercial site. And second of all, it's running a content management system. Would you say so? Yeah, it looks like it to me. Yeah. What uh, is that? And mean? if it was sensible, it would be because you're going to have all kinds of users trying to customize their classified ads. Right. That's what this is, is a classified ad mm -hmm. site? Yeah. Uh, for instance, here's one of the inside pages where you can, uh, someone's advertising their motorcycle. You couldn't do this by hand. You'd have to have a way, a, a database. You could do anything by hand, but, <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't want to. So. Yeah, you have, have a <laughs> yeah. database and you yeah. have software that pulls from the database and that's what it generates that's the pages what, and that's yeah, what's going on here. So this is probably using a set of templates, and, uh, and you know, I'm going to go ahead and say they need to customize these templates a little further. This is a more generic look than it ought to be. It ought to be. There's some lost opportunity, I think, in the way the page is laid out. I'm going to kind of focus today on user interface. Uh, there's some really good stuff happening. This start here box, I think, is a great acknowledgement of the fact that people usually come to a site and they don't really know where to click first. And so start here is really clear. This is, you know, this is what you do right away when you come here. So a good idea. It's a good idea. I think it's too subtle, though. I think it's off to the side here, easy right. to miss. The, the blinks are easy to miss. I think it should be bigger. I think there should be some graphics, even if there were just some arrows or, or a bigger start, start here. here. Right. Uh, you would really get some benefit right. from that. Right. Right. So, but I like the idea. I really like the idea. And the other thing I'd say, as far as the UI goes, is down here at the bottom, there is a search. Now, this is a classified site, and you're, you're going to come here looking for things to buy. And so uh, when you come, you're going to need to search. Maybe and you I, should put that up higher, you I think? I think it should be higher. In yeah. fact, I would probably drop it in right between this sort of intro text area 
and sort of these latest posts that they have. So you say put it what we call above the fold. Above the fold. Yeah. You want to describe what above the fold means? <laughs> well, it's an old newspaper term, you know, yeah. from when newspapers were folded in half. Right. And the stuff on the t on the front, when you picked it up, would obviously come to your eyes before the stuff on the bottom. So on a website, it's the stuff you see when you first come to the site mm -hmm. without scrolling. Yes. Right now you have to scroll it's for the search. It's a little fuzzy because, of course, everybody's got different size monitors, yeah. and you can install all these tabbed browsers and things right. to plug in on the top of your browser. But right. still, the higher on the page, generally, the better. Yeah. Okay. So we call that above the fold. I think the search. Yeah, I think the search should be at, at least above the fold. Yeah. yeah. So the, the other thing I wanted to point out here is that there's a couple of spaces where they've got what's called trapped white space, and that's here where this text is breaking. Oh. And then down here, as, as I showed you earlier, below, above the search box, because of the way the columns fall, you have this white space in here that isn't being used. Oh, I love that. And you have this white space Trapped up white here. space, yeah. And it's trapped because it's surrounded by the rest of the content right. on the page. So what do you do about that? Well, you put something in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, okay. it's a bad idea. It's sort of visually disruptive to have right. this big empty spot. It also is a lost opportunity. It's something you could be, say, putting a big start here box with some buttons and right. graphics in it. Right. That would go really nicely right here yeah. in this tra trapped white space. This is a case where they're using a system with existing templates, and it's, it's kind of hard to change the way it's working. And yeah. that's the disadvantage of having a content management system yeah. is Anytime less flexible. Yeah, you want to customize and you're going away from the standard stuff, well, you know, you're, you're creating an exception and right. you've got to do the code for that. But right. I think it's worth doing to get people in faster to where they want to be. Yeah. You know, connect people up with those, those sellers that they want to, uh, to find. What, what, it's interesting, what you've said today is all really about what happens when the person first sees this site and funneling them into the parts of the site that you want them to be mm -hmm. in, whether it's the search or start they don't want here. They want to be on the homepage. They want to be on this page. They want to be doing the stuff. Yeah. Right? So you need to get them to the spot. And everything about this page, is, and commercial sites, this is almost always true, you need to get them to the action. The Funnel homepage them to is where, an introduction. Yeah. I like that. That's a really important point. Now, this is a, a well-done site, and obviously they're going to do well, but these are just little things you could do to, yeah. to tweak it up. Just to get people going faster, to get people yeah. using it more. And there's two, of course, two things that someone could do here. They could, they're looking for a classified, or they're trying to sell something. So you could do something with that. Buy, um, sell. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just yeah, two just, choices. Just point people in the right direction right, right away. Make right. it easy. Right. Oh, I love it. Susie Gardner is, a, is the author of a new book which should be out any day now, Blogging for Dummies, yeah. second edition. Did you do the first edition, too? I did not. You're responsible for the better part, the second edition. The, the more recent improved ones. improved edition. <laughs> anyway, you can find that in bookstores soon. And, of course, go to hopstudios.com. That's where she is in charge of all the creative stuff and comes here on a regular basis to help our viewers get their sites tweaked up. I really appreciate that. You're very welcome. Find it for less.com.au. Nope. No. Nope. Find for you.com.au. <laughs> Find for you.com.au. Thank you, Susie. All right, we're going to take a break, come back in just a little bit, but first, a close up picture of something you might find around the lab. I know, I know those plugs. I've seen those plugs before. What the tech is that? Hmm, think about it. We'll talk about it. Well, the lab continues right after this. Welcome back to the lab. Before the break, we took a look at this something close up. Now, see, I know those. Those, uh, it's uh, those are power connectors. It's a fan. That's it. It's an Ultra ATX W1034179 power supply. Did I have to get all the numbers right to get that right? Yeah, I'm not even giving you a half for that. Not even a half for that. <laughs> I knew it was something with it. Anyway, Sean takes those pictures with his zoom-in lens and does a great job. Thank you, Sean. You stumped me once again. Now you, Kate, you, I, I need a call from you. I will you. not stump you. This you. is Johnny, and he is from Chapel Hill in North Carolina. I love it. Hello, Johnny. Hi, Leo. How's everything in Chapel Hill? Great, great. great I picture. just saw that your birthday is on Thursday, and I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Thank you, Johnny. I know I, I, uh, I was actually hadn't told anybody around here, hoping that they wouldn't notice. But uh, now you've spoiled it. You spoiled well, the fun. That's all right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What can I do for you today? Um, my question is, um, I often like to leave my computer on at night so I can listen to your podcast while I go to sleep. Oh. And, um, <laughs> And um, we put you to sleep, sleep too. Uh, I bet <laughs> we put yeah. you right out. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to sleep, um, the, com the computer processor is uh, it's running just fine. There's the fans not really going or anything. Uh -huh. 
when I wake up, it's it's really going. And oh, I'll interesting. I have a lot of web pages open uh, when I go to sleep. So I'm thinking maybe some scripts on the, might be causing that. Maybe some flash. Does it only happen? So you're listening to the podcast on my site, or are you, yeah. So you're listening to it at twit.tv. Yeah. Are there uh, any other pages open? Yeah, there's. I, I use. There's probably a lot of YouTube pages open. Okay. <laughs> and if you were to close, have you tried this? If you were to close the browser uh, and leave it on, does this fan spin up at the still, or does it not do that? Um, I usually just leave it open, but when I look at, the, and when I, you know, the task manager. And yeah. We're kind of losing the audio. <laughs> Firefox is famous, notorious, in fact, for doing something that might be causing this. Uh, it pre-caches uh, all of the links on any page. So if you leave it open long enough, it uses more and more memory downloading all the other pages that are linked to and all the pages you've got. So that could be one problem. I think it's, you know, the, the, the Mozilla Corp says, well, no, that's not a bug, that's a feature. We do that on purpose to speed up your browsing. Others say Firefox is just notorious memory leaks. So it could be Firefox. No script, which is a wonderful Firefox plugin, won't really help because it's not scripts. It's actually Firefox that's doing it. But I do want to make sure people know about this because this plugin is uh, recommended by people like Steve Gibson who say the only secure way to use the uh, internet is to turn off all scripting. So he does recommend no script. It's a Firefox extension. Uh, you can get it uh, just by going to the add-ons page on Firefox and download it. I don't use it because it kind of gets in my way because so many sites use scripts. But if you really want to be safe, scripts are, you know, that's JavaScript, Java, and other stuff. This program will actually block that. There's other things that could be going on, Johnny, as well, though. Don't forget that your computer also does work at night. For instance, Windows, when it sees that you're not using the computer, you know, hey, Johnny's falling asleep. He's not listening anymore. The podcast ran out. And it quickly, it starts indexing the hard drive. That could also be using up uh, some CPU cycle. Something's going on that's making the fan spin up. It's because your computer's doing some work. So it could be just Windows indexing. Could be your email program um, indexing. Outlook does that from time to time. There's a, when your computer's running, there's a lot of little things going on in the background, and it could be any one of those. There's some stuff that you could use when you get up in the morning and you see that it's doing this. There's some stuff that you can use. What version of Windows? are you using? XP. XP. Vista has a really nice uh, task manager now that can give you a lot of information about what's going on. But on XP, uh, what I would recommend is a program called Process Explorer. It's from Microsoft, written by Mark Racinovich. Uh, you can get it by going, actually Googling Process Explorer, you'll find, you'll find it right away. This tells you what's going on, what programs are running uh, in the background. It might give you some idea about what exactly is getting the computer to spin up. You can see there's a lot of information in here, including CPU usage, a graph of history, so you can see when it started spinning up. You could try to figure out what it is that started up that made this happen. This is a wonderful program, absolutely free. Microsoft.com slash TechNet. It's part of the SysInternals family. SysInternals also has uh, a program called Auto Runs that uh, will tell you what programs r are running in the background. And you use that in conjunction with Process Explorer to figure out what's, what exactly is going on. It might be the page. It could be Firefox. It could be something else, too. I think if you really want to do, if you really care and you really want to do the homework, these are the programs you need. And I would start with this excellent Process Explorer program. What a great program this is. Uh, absolutely free. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, I'm so I'm thrilled that you listen to all my shows. Thank you for the uh, birthday greetings. And uh, you could just send gifts to uh, me, care of Kate. Okay, especially if it's chocolate, because then I'll never see it again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks, Leo. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Now we're going to walk on over to the guy who's got something stuck in his ear. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean has a shiny... Is that is. A, okay? I'm figuring that's a Bluetooth thing, right? It is. It's a Bluetooth headset. Okay. This is the Flamingo uh, Bluetooth headset. Now, normally Bluetooth headsets do not have, you know, uh, no cords around your neck. No, this is a, a lanyard. That's actually one nice little feature about it. It's uh, when you're not using it, you just yeah. Hang it from your I kind of like that because a lot of people walk around with those things in their in their ear. Yeah. So the one nice thing about this one is uh, it actually doesn't go into your ear with uh, one of the isolation ones, and it doesn't clip around the outside and making your ear uncomfortable when you're wearing glasses. This one actually uses a little clip here 
that actually Ooh. pushes up against the outside of your ear. Oh, that's interesting. And it, it basically is holds it pretty secure in there? It is pretty secure. You can actually uh, shake it around like this, and it, it came out because I didn't put it in right. But you spin it into place and it holds and into it place. It really holds it in there, right? And, it, and you uh, have different sizes. Uh, uh, these pinchers. things right here come off, so you can actually put in one that fits your ear better. So if you have a little tiny shell like right. ear like Kate does, you would get the little one. Right. If you have a big ear like Ryan, you would you would get the big one. Right. And uh, the one thing about it is it's six straight down, which is a little bit different uh, for from most of these Does ones. It sound so it okay, though? Bit, it sounds great, okay. actually. Um, so it, it sounds good inside your ear. The microphone quality is good. Um, it does come with a little bit of a noise canceling foam tip that you can put over top of this, which looks pretty dorky, I gotta say. So I hey, you know have what? Gone if, and you're, lost if you're walking around with a Bluetooth headset in your ear, you look pretty dorky, anyways. Dorky doesn't yeah. begin to. <laughs> you just yeah. live with the dorky. Well, that's the one nice thing about this one is the lanyard makes it so that you can hide it when it's not in use, so you yeah. don't have to look like a member of the Borg everywhere it, you go. It does have the flashing blue light, though. Right. If, you know, if you're walking around at night and you don't have a flashing blue light behind you, you're nobody these days. Exactly. So uh, let's get the uh, pros and cons, or as you say, the shinies and the. Yes, sir. This. All right, so, well, it doesn't hurt to wear. That's the one nice thing about the comfy. way that you put it in. It's comfy. Can't say that about all of them. And it doesn't interfere with your glasses, we which like goes that. back to comfortable. And, and the lanyard makes it uh, nice and easy to tuck away, so right. it's not always sitting there on your ear. And the multiple ear tips mean that it's for everybody, basically. What are the negatives? Negatives, well, it can only be used in the right ear with oh. the, this particular configuration. That's dumb. Uh, and the, the windbreaker does look dorky, and <laughs> when you've got the lanyard attached, it looks dorky anyway. <laughs> so, Double you, dork. You know, you, you've got to balance Price everything. is right, though. 80 bucks is not 80 bad. Bucks. 80 bucks is not bad at all, and it sounds good. And that's really the most important thing. Comfort and sound are what I'm looking for. That's Flamingo. I hadn't heard their yeah. name before. They're the, they're, 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 are they new in Bluetooth, or just am I behind the times? Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I hadn't, sure. Heard, I hadn't heard of them before, yeah. but uh, we might be hearing more from them with this. I like it. That's very cool. All right, details on our website, labwithleo.com. We're going to take another call in just I'm a little bit. i call right now, in fact. <laughs> He's talking right, right now. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the quiz question of the day, all right? Don't get any answers from your Bluetooth headset. What is the equivalent temperature in degrees Celsius, misspelled, of <laughs> spelling error of absolute zero? Absolute zero in Celsius. I know it's not 98.6, unless I'm frozen solid. So what could it be? Think about it. We'll talk about it. A little science question when the lab continues. Hey, welcome back to the Lab with Leo. I'm Kate Abraham. I've got a quick question for you. Do you eat healthily? I try to eat healthily, but I tend to always snack, and unfortunately, that's not good for a good diet. I've got a great new website, which is called theworldshealthiestfoods.com, and the idea is it shows you the different foods available to you and how good they are for you. It's such an easy site to use, nice and green. Green's my favorite color, so I'm very happy. <laughs> and it has new recipes, it has healthy foods of the week, and it even has like, healthy eating tips. But the best thing about this website it actually gives you a list of 130 foods that will serve as a basis to improve your energy. Oh, I like and they're, that. They're broken down into different food groups, and the great thing is you can see whether or not things are good for you. Or what's this? Well, unfortunately, I can replace not. the coffee I've been drinking with Coffee's something energetic. Bad, eh? I think it probably is, but yeah, well, I love it. Well, the good thing, if you do coffee, don't do sugar, do honey. Natural energy. Really? Yes. Oh. The website told me that. Is that that? So that's whfoods.com. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I just found out that an apple, day, an apple a day really does keep the doctor away. There's actually scientific evidence. Really? It's, got, it's really good for you. So I'm going to eat an apple every day. These are apples that eat like they have got your appetite. That's the problem with apples. Oh, that's not good. Then you get hungry and then you yeah. eat the bad stuff. <sighs> you can't win, you know? <laughs> Fresh air and water. Just give me a hot dog a go. Well, yeah. All right. Let's get another caller on the air here, Okay. Kate. We have John from Overland Park in Kansas. Oh, hey, John. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. How's I'll things in... i thank my girlfriend for um, giving me apples every day. Does she? Yeah. That's really nice of her. Mm -hmm. And what kind of apples? Um, I like the Granny Smith, but what are, what are the, the, the green red ones. ones, the Gala apples? Yeah, those are good, too. Yeah, I just, you know, it's funny, the hotel I stay at here in Vancouver, they have apples right on the front desk there, and I, every time I go by, I have an apple, and it's just, it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm, Bill Graham definitely. used to do that at the, uh, at, uh, the Fillmore West, he used to give you an apple when you went to the rock concerts. <laughs> They're good, yeah. happy, healthy food. I'm sorry, I, I completely got sidetracked. What, what can I do for you, John? <laughs> oh, um, I'm interested in um, getting a Windows Mobile 6 phone. Okay. Um, uh, T -Mo I, I'm looking at the T-Mobile Wing, and I was Yes, wondering... I love that, by the way. What a nice phone, yeah. Yeah. 
I was wondering um, if it was possible that there are any programs for Windows Mobile 6 to download net, netcast or vidcast on the fly without a computer? Yes. Because, you know, the Windows yeah. Mobile 6 phones have the Wi-Fi in it. And well, the way a lot of people do it uh, is that, and I understand what you're asking, but the way that most people do it is they will actually do it um, by syncing up with... Uh, Windows Media Player, right? So that means you go to the computer and you use something like Doppler to do it. I'm not sure that's the ideal way to do it. Uh, I'm going to show you two programs. I'm going to show you a free one and a commercial one, okay? Um, you know, I understand that, uh, you know, if you want to subscribe and you want to use your high speed internet connection to download these and you sync every day, that it might be easiest to use something like Doppler on the desktop and Windows Media Player and then sync with that. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a how to from Engadget that talks about how to do that. But let me show you a couple of them. First of all, this is Feeder Reader. This is not, uh, not uh, commercial, this is not free software, it's commercial software. The idea is it does read RSS feeds, including podcasts. And the key on that is it has to support the enclosure tag on podcasts. So you can actually literally listen. They have a play button and everything. You can literally listen on your phone and it'll automatically download. This works. This, your question is the kind of question people ask in the States, but don't ask so much in uh, Canada because there's no free bandwidth in Canada. Uh, no unlimited bandwidth. So if you started downloading podcasts in Canada on your on your smartphone, you'd be paying hundreds of dollars a month. We're a little bit luckier. Here's one I'm also fond of, and this is a free one. And one of the reasons I'm fond of it is they have a big picture of me on their front page. It's <laughs> pocketpodcasts.sourceforge.net. Uh, this is a, see, there's my picture. This is a podcast client for Windows Mobile. It's absolutely free. Same idea. You subscribe to the feeds. You subscribe ahead of time. It'll automatically download them in the background. Uh, you know, and you, whenever you feel like listening, you'll you'll be able to hear it. I like it because it gives you the full description of the podcast, including links uh, to the hosts and stuff. So if the podcaster has put a good description into his podcast feed, as I do, all of that stuff comes down. There's a desktop version as well on this, which is kind of nice. It allows you, see, it gives you all that information. The desktop version allows you to do this uh, on your desktop and sync later. So for our friends in Canada, that might be a better choice since they don't <laughs> they have to pay for the broad yeah. the bandwidth on a Windows mobile device. I think this is a good this there there I wish there were more choices. I wish Microsoft would put, do something they now that they have podcast support in the Zoom, I'm hopeful that they will soon add this to Windows and maybe even add it to Windows Mobile. Uh, Nokia does it already on their Nokia phones. A lot of a lot of phone companies have podcast clients. Uh, but unfortunately, Microsoft hasn't seen fit to put it in Windows Mobile yet. This is a good choice. This is the one I'd probably start with since it's free. Pocket Podcasts. Pocket Podcasts. SourceForge. Show notes. Yeah, I'll be in the show notes. Oh. But you just go to pocketpodcasts.sourceforge.net. You can find it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Hey, I'm. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I presume those are the ones you're listening to. Yeah, I listen to Twit and. Um the KFI podcast. Great. See, there you go. There's Twit right there on the front of the Pocket Podcasts page. That's what I like. I like it. <laughs> it works on uh, all kinds of uh, Pocket uh, PC devices, including the new ones. So okay. a really good choice. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, John. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. More of your calls coming up in just a bit. You stay right here. The lab continues right after these important mini films manufactured by some of the best companies in the world. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the lab. I'm Leo Laporte. Now let's get another caller on the line and get Abraham. You've got the caller for us. I do indeed. I have Chris from Taray in uh, New South Wales. Oh, how wonderful. Hello, Chris. Hello, Leo. How are you? I am wonderful. What happened to your beanie? You had a propeller beanie earlier. Who is it? There we go. <laughs> Chris, you're a geek. Oh, yeah. And you're proud of it. Oh, since watching and listening to you, um, we have both become sort of geeks. My hubby, who is a pom white cake, um, looks over my shoulder and watches all that I do. And we lay in bed of an evening and watch your show and, <laughs> um, and learn many things. Isn't that wonderful, Christine? You're just, you're just warming my heart there. I love that. Well, what can I do to help you and hubby become more geeky? Well, 
You keep off on 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 to have to get to me question now. I've moved my camera. Here I am. Well, there we uh, go. It's a dog, actually. I'm looking at a dog, not you. You're looking at a dog. Why are you looking uh, at a dog? The was that I keep hearing you talking about Linux and you bon you you. I can't pronounce it now. You Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yes. Are you a Linux hacker? Um, like I'm on Windows XP. But and if I was to install it, um, would it, it, like, is it still sort of thing? Can you get to win your Windows applications as well, well on? Now I'm not explaining it real well. You can I know what you're saying now. So you want to run Ubuntu Linux? which is a free operating system. It's highly secure. Actually, a little later on, uh, Brian's going to show us how to put uh, Ubuntu on a, P a Sony PS3 gaming machine. Ubuntu is a wonderful, wonderful version of Linux. Uh, but you want to know if you're running Ubuntu, if you can see the Windows side of it. Now, I, I have to tell you right up front, you cannot really easily run Windows applications on Linux. It's a different operating system. And, and, it, and it you could, with some effort, using something called Wine, you could get some of them to running. But really, the good news is Ubuntu does everything Windows does with its own free versions of those Windows applications. So instead of using Microsoft Office, you would use the free Open Office, and that would be a word processor, a spreadsheet, and all of that stuff. It has its own solitaire games. What other stuff? Uh, is it Windows applications or just Windows files you want to be able to see? Uh, I was just wondering, like, sometimes on occasions, my Windows haven't booted up properly for me. Right. And I've had to go through all the process. And if you wanted to get to a certain document or something, I was just wondering, Got you know, it. would you say so you would, all these you, you, you boot and things like that? Right. You'd boot to the um, Ubuntu disk, or you could boot, if you've already installed it, you could boot to the Ubuntu partition on your system. And then Windows isn't working, but you could still see the files. In most cases, yes. The, if you have a recent version of Ubuntu, it can read and write the Windows disk. Older versions could only read NTFS. Um, NTFS is the file system that uh, Windows Vista uses. On XP, you may have NTFS or FAT32. These are two different file systems. Linux has never had a problem with FAT32. It can read and write it just fine. And late, later versions of Ubuntu do a good job with the new file system that is part of uh, Windows Vista and some XP installations. So the, the short answer is shouldn't be a problem. You should be able to see those drives, access them, copy files, and if they're Microsoft Word documents, you'd open them with OpenOffice. If they're Excel spreadsheets, you'd open them with OpenOffice and things like that. So, Christine, yeah, the answer is you should be able to do that just fine. Have you tried it? No, no. I've sort of been, you know, hanging about. I'm one of these, like, you know, at, at almost 60, you kind of didn't grow up with all this technology. Hey, so, I, I'm only 50, and I didn't grow up with all these technologies. You have to be, like, younger than Sean. To have, now, he's a young kid, but you have to be younger than... Younger than, <laughs> look at him. You have to be younger than Sean to grow up with all these technologies. So yeah, we're all learning together. I mean, that's the beauty of all of this. I understand yeah. that uh, Christine, you wanted Sean to blow you a kiss. Oh yes, please. Sean, blow her a kiss. <laughs> oh. Oh, isn't he a doll? <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell him, tell him on, on the next show just that he has to sort of stand there next shiny that he's showing. He has to say. And this kiss is for Christine. And this kiss is for Christine. Did you get that, Sean? I got it. Okay, he's going to do Let's that for you, Christine. Because I love his shinies. Make sure your hubby's not watching when you know his happens. <laughs> oh, no. He'll, he'll ask. Well, he's asked, yes, could he have a kiss blown from Kate to Alan? Okay, well, Kate, you got to blow a kiss to Alan. Sean will blow a kiss to Christine, and I'll just stand here. <laughs> I'll be in the crossfire. I think you're going to like Ubuntu. The way to try this, Christine, is to yeah. either go and get the disc. They actually will mail you a disc or download it if you've got a lot of bandwidth. And then instead of installing it, you put the disc into the CD player and you reboot your machine and you actually have it run without installing it. It's called a live CD. And by doing that, 
Then you can see if you like it. It's a little slower because it's not running off the hard drive. It's running off the CD. But you can see if you like it. You can see if it'll do the reading and writing of the files that you want it to do. You can really try before you uh, install. It's, it, I think this is one of the best innovations. It actually started with another flavor of Linux called Gnopix. Uh, but I think this is a really great way to go. So they do uh, have a, uh, the, you, you can get them to mail you a disk. You can also download it. Um, Ubuntu is a remarkable product. U-B-U-N-T-U dot com. And it is currently uh, one of my absolute favorite Linuxes. I just think they've done a great job. So download it, put it on a disk, uh, and then you'll, you'll be able to uh, try. You can also, if you don't want to download it, go to this request free CDs button and they'll actually, they'll actually mail it to you. And Mark Shuttleworth, the guy behind Ubuntu, pays the postage, which is very generous of him. It's called Ship It, and you'll get the latest version. Gutsy Gibbon. All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, we're not. We're going to go right over here to Mr. Free File. We're talking about free operating yes. systems. Ryan Yule's got a free file for I you. I do. It's Windows on Windows. Specific? Yes, yeah. it is Windows. Now, I would have to say that you please, please, please be careful. I sometimes know enough to be dangerous. This <laughs> I'm going to stand back yes, now. Okay. This this allows you to open up Windows. It's called Auto Runs, and it allows you to see what your computer automatically, your Windows system automatically kind of starts up when you log on. This when is you start MS processes. Config on steroids. This is MS Config on steroids. So if you start going in here and just start, oh, I don't need that, and turning things off and on, you're going to be doing things you shouldn't be doing. In so, general, though, I have to say you probably can't turn anything off that, that will keep you from booting. No, but but um, it might change the way you're. Start behaves. deleting, like if it's a Microsoft <laughs> publisher, Microsoft Corporation, yeah. don't turn it off. I don't think. I mean, okay. if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like that, then research it. So I got Iconoid down here in my login, so you can see when I start up my computer. So these are programs that start yeah, up automatically. So Iconoid starts up automatically. So I can turn that off and just unclick that. Right. And if I if I want to turn it back on, I can just turn it back on. What's nice about this, it does tell you more about than than, than MS then, Config yeah. does about what you've got. So you can see where it came exactly. from, what, what it's doing, and maybe decide whether you want to turn exactly. it off. But so this is a great way to properties. speed up your machine. So, but, I, but I just want to preface that, that please, if you're going to use this, kind of look into what you're turning off and on. It can be dangerous. Yes, I've, I've no, been known to do, uh, I've broken my car before trying to fix things. I've broken my computer so before. So what you're saying is, be careful. Yes. Don't be like yeah. Ryan. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Let me make a mistake. I have to say, I have to say up front. Okay. There are very few things you could actually stop. This wouldn't let you stop your system from booting. Okay. This just would turn off things like programs that run and start, but you don't have to have. Okay. So it's it's not too hard. Okay. Don't you don't have to worry. Okay. I don't want to scare the folks. No. At home. And you can always run it again and turn it back. There on. you go. Yeah. See, it's someone who knows. Very useful. Auto runs is free from Microsoft. It is. It's a uh, Yule's Jewel. Go to labwithleo.com. Select free files. There's a bunch there, including this auto runs it's all good 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 well done now let's get some people who know Not what they're doing in here let's for a dangerous this. person and yes. did you know that he in an earlier life he was an assassin <sighs> not kidding he was not a very good one though not a very good one but he is dangerous all right, you ready to you ready to put Ubuntu Linux or some form of Linux on a PS3? I'm, are you ready to learn I'm, how to program? I'm ready to. Are you ready watch to hack it? I'm ready to watch it happen. All right, Brian's going to do it. Brian Larue is going to show us how to hack any hack. When the lab continues, you stay right here. One more chance, though, before we go. Last chance. Last chance. Last chance. To to, to tell us what the equivalent oh. temperature in degrees Celsius is of absolute zero. I have no idea. I just know it's not 98.6. Did you? Yes. Do you know? Yes, I do. You are so smart. I'm going to take a guess, but I'll do that after you do your guess, and then we'll tell you the answer right after this. Welcome back to the lab. Before the break, we asked you what absolute zero is in Celsius. That's the lowest temperature you can get. You can't get any lower than that. I'm thinking it's 273, but I don't know. I'm right. And I didn't, even, I didn't even study the metric system. I'm still Fahrenheit. Of course, I, could, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit either. So it's something around 400, huh? First one. It's 453. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's that's when like no molecules are moving. Everything's just frozen solid. Brian Larue is here. He is a programmer at Nitobi, and he's also a hacker. He look what he did. He took a PS3. <laughs> And he put Linux on it. Now that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. Linux runs anywhere. I wouldn't uh, say I'm a hacker per se. I could put a CD in the drive. <laughs> it wasn't that hard then. No, it wasn't hard at all. It was really simple. You, you, you're using Ubuntu, actually a special uh, version of Ubuntu that requires yes. fewer resources. That's right. 
Yeah. It's called uh, Zubuntu. Right, right. Yeah. X Ubuntu. That's right. And 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 that's that's what's running on here, and it looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks great. That's pretty impressive. It works pretty well. So we just thought we'd show that just for fun because you can do it. I'm going to go home and do it. Yeah. And you, you didn't have to modify the disk in any way. No way whatsoever. Put the Ubuntu disk in, and it just does it. Good to go. <laughs> Love yep. it. And now you can still play games on this. You can reboot it. That's right. You, you get a bootloader? In. Yes, exactly. Well, the PS3 comes with one built in, so I mean, you they can... They kind of want it. Sony wants you to do this. I think they want you to use it for scientific purposes. They most certainly uh, don't want you to play games with your Linux distribution, and uh, okay. they've uh, crippled the um, video card. That's why so. you have to use it with Ubuntu, because you don't have the full video That's right. yeah. uh, capabilities of the machine. That's fine. Just the fact that you can run Linux on this. It's got built-in Wi-Fi. It's cool. a $400 Linux machine. Exactly. That's a pretty good deal. Totally. And high-def video. All right, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Hackity Hack. That's right. This is a, a programming language for kids. Is that what it is, or is it? Well, it's a programming environment for kids, and okay. actually, the programming language underneath it all is uh, Ruby. Oh, which neat! Which is uh, an accessible language. I think Ruby is a really good learner's language. I, I've right. been a Python fan for a long time. Well, yeah. Ruby has the same advantage. It's interpreted, so you can enter in a statement and see what it's going to do. Exactly, exactly. And the idea behind Hackity Hack is to bring programming to kids. Um, when we were growing up. We had, you know, the TRS-80, right. Commodore 64. And you had BASIC, so you, you had like always an Abacus built in. or something. Yeah. Back in I had rocks. That's <laughs> all we had. We just had a couple of rocks. Yeah. Um, but uh, so when we were growing up, we had all these simple tools to learn right. how to program. And right. now things have gotten super complex. And so Hackity Hack hopes to solve that. And You're not going to give a kid Visual Studio and say, Never. here, learn C++. Yeah. That's yeah. going to, you know, it's crazy. Here's Java. And, and I made yeah. a point at the beginning of the show. It's not just to teach kids to be B programmers, but to give them a feeling of control and understanding of how the computer works. And that's the real value of something like this, that's whether right. they're programmers or not in the end. Yeah. I mean, it's learning more about the machines that you use every day. Right. And, and it's uh, fun. It is fun. So show us what Hackity Hack looks like. So this is Hackity Hack. Um, free from the internet, by the way. Yeah, you don't completely have to pay for free. It. Um, I'm running it for fun uh, on Ubuntu Linux. Um, but Does it, it work will, on other? It runs on Windows. Okay. It actually doesn't run on Mac yet, which is shame. kind of interesting. For shame. For shame, indeed. Um, and, and so this is the bulk of the program. It's kind of like a web site in a way, but not. Um, and it's the whole idea is to be accessible and simple. Um, You've got home, I want to I want to learn Ruby. So this Let's I could use it. this to learn Ruby. Let's just jump right in and okay. start learning Ruby. And so it's a series of lessons that take place at the top. What fun! And a tiny little IDE underneath it. And so here it goes: name equals ask your name, please. And then we're just going to put name. Now, as adults, this looks very intimidating and scary, but I can promise you kids will master this in seconds. seconds. They just yeah. go, oh, okay. All they really would have to do is copy and paste from this box into the box below. Right. And there's a little bit more to the tutorial. And then you can say that. run it? And then you just put run, and boom, oh, it's Oh, and then when it does that, a kid goes, I did that. You did that. I did that. So I, I wrote that program. Brian Mommy, LaRue. I wrote my first program. Okay, and there we go, Brian LaRue. That, that's now, cool. There's a whole bunch more going on with Hackity Hack. Um, you can take it quite a bit farther, and it's still in beta. Okay. So it's uh, it's a new thing. Um, it should expect to be going to 1.0 sometime next year in 2000, mid 2008. Is it written um, in Ruby? Yes. So there's no reason why it couldn't run on the Mac because Macs come with Ruby. It's one of the few operating systems, well, mainstream operating systems, that does. Windows doesn't come with Ruby. So. And as you can see, I kind of am running it on my oh, Mac. Yeah. I'm just using uh, Parallels right, right. now. Um, so you're running in Windows, or you're running in Linux? I'm running it on Ubuntu through Parallels <laughs> on my Mac. <laughs> I'm going to so install this. Is, yeah. That's really cool. And so they can progress up, and they'll become more and more sophisticated? That's right, and they can learn more and more. They can actually use uh, different services and interact with the web so they can draw down YouTube videos. They oh, can wow. play MP3s. They can create a blog. Oh, so this isn't some stripped down, print your name 20 times kind of programming language. You can do no, a lot with it. You this. can do a lot of cool stuff. And eventually, the kids will become familiar and comfortable with Ruby, which is also really cool. Very yeah. useful. Yeah. And with web services and interfacing to web APIs, which I think, I know that sounds really geeky, but I think that that's a skill that will be very helpful to them yeah, in, in later years. Um, I mean, we all use the web every day. Right. And, uh, you know, we're we're just learning what it's like to be with the web. Um, kids are growing up with it. It's part of their life. What does that mean? You want to really have some fun? You could put it hackety hack on your PS3. Yeah, you could. Don't tell them. <laughs> Say, oh, you know, um, today instead of Assassin's Creed, we're going to be playing hackety hack. Yeah. And then walk away. 
yeah, and, and see what they see do. See what happens. <laughs> you might be surprised when they come back. They might say, "Yeah, I cobbled together a website. I've got a YouTube feed here. This yeah. is your RSS and the acquisition uh, offer from Google." Yeah, it's right. So, only a million bucks. <laughs> come on, I think it's worth fifty billion. Your next Mark Zuckerberg, right there. That's yeah. how easy that is. That's, That's very right. cool. So, <laughs> hackity hack. You can download it for free. We'll put a link in the show notes yeah. and uh, just walk through these tutorials, and uh, you'll learn how to do it. Is that how you learn, Brian? Hackity hack. Yeah, no, I wish it was. <laughs> that would have been a lot yeah, easier. It would have been much easier. Brian writes now in Ruby for uh, professionally at Nitobi, N I T O B I dot com. That's right. And also has his own blog, That's which right. is westcoastlogic.com. You talk about stuff like this on there, westcoastlogic.com? No, it's mostly dirty stuff, but I mean, check it out. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Kids, don't go to his blog, okay? A final word coming up right after this. You stay right here. Thank you, Brian. That's yeah. great. Yeah, it's good to see you. Thank I you. want to download that because I would like, you know, it's. I have a. Welcome back to the lab. Did you ever do any uh, computer programming? Hell no. That's a good way to meet kids. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust me with it at Hey, all. baby, you ever do any computer programming? <laughs> <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have. I'm not sure. You know, I, I, I think people think computer programming is all geeky and kind of boring. It's actually... It's. Uh, I mean, if you do crossword puzzles or you do jumbles or you do any kind of brain... It's, logic, isn't it? it's problem solving mm. and it's really satisfying. And I, I mean, don't poison your kids brains against it because it isn't geeky it's really fun a lot of kids love it because yes. one thing it does give you is a sense of i can control what happens absolutely. inside this box absolutely. and while you may not be able to control what's going on in your life especially <laughs> if you're a teenager the sense of being and i think this is why a lot of kids end up getting into computers is the sense of being able to have this one small universe where you are god and master and mm -hmm. can make it happen and then the, and then sometimes it doesn't go right and the challenge of figuring out why finding the bugs it's a very enjoyable hobby. It doesn't have to be a professional. Now, I wish being younger, I could have done it. Obviously, I'm the wrong generation. No, you can I, start right now. I know, my brain's getting really... No, messy. this is a good time to do it. Build your brains. Everybody could do it. We get Christine and her husband, Alan, to do it. Oh, I think you owe somebody a kiss. That's for Alan. Sean kiss already Alan. blew a kiss to Christine, <laughs> so we've taken care Wasn't of that she now. she awesome, though? She was, she was so fantastic. great. I love the she, propeller beanie. She told me, actually, she's going to go on swimming now. They're heading out to the beach to go swimming, so obviously she's got a pretty nice life down there. That's in Taree. Mm-hmm. Very fun. nice life. How fun. One last thing. I have this spam here. You what were wondering, this? I'm sure, yeah, where that story? came from. We've had that for some time. It's kind of a good luck charm. We've had it since the day Call for Help started. Monica Latano brought it to Andy Walker. Andy Walker has passed it along to us. We've had it for at least... I don't know, five, six years now. Next time I speak to Monica, I will thank her. <laughs> it's I not just any her. spam. That's it's, special spam. It's Hawaiian spam, and Hawaiian. you can make almost like sushi-style stuff. Let's out. open it up, because you know it never goes bad. You know bad. I'm not touching that. <laughs> That's the problem. I, don't I can never get anybody to open it. It's the fruitcake of the meat world. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> do you like fruitcake? I do not. Don't. Oh, I, thought, I thought all Brits loved fruitcake. Absolutely not. If I put some custard on it, would you like I it? I would give it a go. Oh, see? Anything <laughs> with Marmite. custard on it. Or what? Marmite. Marmite and custard. At the same time. Ooh. <laughs> if you want to be on the show, enough silliness. We want to tell you. If you want to be on the show, we'd love to get you on the show. How can they do that? Uh, Labwithlea.com forward slash tech questions. Submit your mm -hmm. question there, and we'll get you on air, and we'll solve your troubles. We would love to have you on the show. This show really we works because of your calls. That helps us know what direction to go in, what kind absolutely. of stuff to talk about. If you want us to be more geeky, let us know. Less geeky, yeah, let us know. Absolutely. Any person can, can phone in. There's, there's no level. There's no level. No level. You, you can no be level. a basic. There's no standards you are what you're a, saying. Yeah, you can be an absolute pro. Okay. We have no standards. I would thank you. Nothing we wrong thank with you that. very much for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.